that to my Brad Chase, I Stan Pestuzek. Hey, we're back in regular session. <laughs> Now, for the time being. How did the drive coming in? Do about the house, you know. <laughs> Doing this all the way? Not all the way, but mid Cape sandwiched through like Yarmouth, it was like this. Uh, so 45, white, white this. knuckle. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Downpour? Yeah. Right. Same thing yesterday, but not as much lightning. Well, yesterday, all, I mean, today was pretty much just drizzled until just now, just you know, now. in the past half hour or yeah. so. Hour maybe. Oh, the drive home yesterday was even oh, worse sorry, with the yeah, rain. Yeah. Just the, yeah. the highway was just was flooded. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Oh, it's just the worst <laughs> part. It's just hitting us now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was driving the yellow, the yellow clouds. Yellow and orange. Great. It's coming down now, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all to the good. Does it play? Do you have a generator? Is that what happened? Did the generator keep on? Or? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying there's a message? It was dark. I was oh, dark. you know what? I wonder if that's what it is. Are we on the generator or not the power? We might be. Probably. You know? Yeah. These lights are like. Look at it. Are we on the generator, maybe? We might be on generator yeah. power. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Matt, you let us know when you're ready to start recording, and then let us know if it goes out. Okay, I just have a request to Jamie about the feed on the online. So we can start the view if you want. This was right my right last right whale here. watch. That's a lot of whales. Huh? Oh, are we? Yes. Please. Oh, I thought we stopped. Sorry. Um, no, we're, we're back. So the first item that we have on tonight's agenda is a request for determination of applicability for 2257 Route 28 Head of the Bay Road for invasive removal and planting. Good evening. Hi, my name is Matt Lautenberger. I'm here for uh, Wilkinson Ecological. Uh, we're submitting a request for determination for uh, 2257 head of the bay um, as you can see on the plan it's a fairly small project 250 square feet um, the uh, our client uh, Kathy Green um, is very uh, concerned with making sure all of the plants on her property are uh, native and everything so she has a chunk of mostly Rugosa rose, but also some Asiatic bittersweet, some vine honeysuckle, and a little bit of white poplar that's starting to pop up that she'd like us to come in and remove. And once those are under control, we have some uh, sweet fern and Carolina rose we'll be placing uh, to replace them, as well as some plugs for some herbaceous stuff. I'd be happy to answer any questions. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, good. Amy, do you have any comments? Sure. So the Conservation Commission recently saw this property for changes to hardscape and additional mitigation. At that meeting, it was made note that it would, you know, you only have a small area left on the bank that really hasn't been um, naturalized uh, and been brought to natives. So we instructed them to do that um, and come with an RDA for that. It's only about an area of 250 square feet. Um, the invasive would be removed by hand to the extent practicable, but some like bittersweet would need to be treated with an herbicide using a cut and white method um, with a mass certified applicator doing it. Areas to be replanted with grasses, uh, native grasses, wildflowers, and shrubs. I would recommend approval with a negative two determination that work is in a resource area, but will not imp negatively impact that reset resource area or its interests. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, comments from the commissioner to start with. Wayne? Well, this sounds pretty simple. No? 
Yeah, just a little bit of discussion on what's going to go in the place of the removed um, plants. Sure. So, are these, Amy, are these um, more ornamental plants or are these species that would be there in a natural habitat? Um, is there any possibility of moving towards uh, a natural habitat type? For this location. Well, the Carolina rose is native. Yeah. Let me look up the plugs. Are I apologize. I believe everything that was picked was native and would naturally be found. Um, some of them, they're not. They are flowers, but right. they are native flowers. On a coastal bank, you would typically see things like butterfly weed, um, asters, blue stems, cone flowers, certainly goldenrod. Mm -hmm. um, and the other grasses above that with the love grass, um, the sedges, those are all things that you would see. Okay, so you're happy with that mix? Yeah. Okay. And I think it'll provide better habitat too, and, and also some pollinator um, species to help yeah. that population, as well as grasses, things. Um, they have a really strong root system, honestly, the coastal banks. So if they're doing, it's a small area, five roses, five sweet ferns as your shrubs. Um, and then the herbaceous species. All right, thanks. Yeah. Stan, any questions? No, thank you. Um, no, I'm good. I assume this is the last area on, the, on, the, uh, on this uh, lot that needs to be sort of restored, if you will? I believe so. Um, uh, I think Steve LeBranch should be on the call if you want to verify that with him, because he's a little bit more familiar with it than I am. Do we have? So what I mean, I can answer the question. Yeah. So is that that's the area on the lot within the hundred foot buffer that would be the extent of the work. Okay. Um, outside the hundred foot buffer, as you get closer to the road, there are some non-natives and some minor invasives there which I believe are gonna also be taken care of, but it's not part of this filing because it's not within the buffer. It sounds like she's interested in addressing yep, everything about she is. Yeah. yeah, she's very Fine. interested in uh, yeah. ecological stability, yeah. Can we have a motion on this item, please? <laughs> sure, I'll move that we approve the request for determination of applicability for 2257 Route 28 uh, head of the Bay Road, map 119, parcel N2. With a negative, With a negative two. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming. Stay oh, dry. Thank you. <laughs> hang out for Next item on the agenda, notice of intent for the, 3 Mark Lane. Uh, mark 30, map 30, pardon me, parcel G5-3 for a new dwelling. Amy, this looks like an extension or continuance? They like a continuance to October 19th. Okay, can we have a motion please to continue this? I'll move that we continue the hearing on the request for a notice of intent for three mark map 30, parcel G5-3 to our meeting October 19th. Thank you. Uh, second. Second. It. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, the next two applicants have agreed to switch so that um, Ed Doherty from the Air Lane Association can go first. All right. All right. Next item then on the agenda that we will hear is uh, Air Lane Property Owners Association, uh, Air Lane Beach for Sand Nourishment. Hi, right, evening. Hi, hello. Uh, my name's Ed Doherty. I am currently the president of the Airline Property Owners Association, and we have filed a notice to um, place sand on our beach when the when the town is doing maintenance dredging through um, the Barnstable County dredge. Uh, this is something we've done, you know, in the in the past, and and apparently something has changed that we have to obtain our own permit. I can speak to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the town has a town-wide 
dredge and nourishment permit. It was a little ambiguous about whether that just covered town beaches or um, private properties as well. And this is dredging, uh, nourishment above the mean high water line only. Um, reviewing the documents, it is clear that that, do that, that town-wide permit is intended to be for just town beaches and landings, pro town properties. So as new owner, as new properties want to, or as properties want to nourish, um, they need to be getting their own permits to do so legal, okay. legally. So that's what you're seeing. So um, in the past, through no fault of their own, um, they thought they were covered um, they, by the town permit. They were not. This is about the Air Lane Properties Owners Association is about 800 linear feet long um, on Nantucket Sound from Pine Street on the west to about Air Lane and Pilgrim Road area on the east. Um, they want to be consistent with what the town does and what the, um, and use the dredge sand from our channels, which they've done in the past. Um, they did have to file with Natural Heritage because a portion of this association property is within uh, Plover Habitat. I haven't seen a letter from Heritage to date. Have you? No, I have not. Okay. I, 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 I did have some conversations with her Perfect. last week. Yeah. So I would anticipate that that's going to come out. Technically, you can't vote on the project until you have something from Heritage. It's going to have conditions, I'm sure, about time of year restrictions because of the plovers, like we have to do. Um, um, but I, w I think um, minus all that, if there's any other questions, you know, hopefully it's just a formality at next meeting. But this would be the time to ask Mr. Doherty any of the questions that you have. Uh, comments from Commissioners Wayne? Uh, you know, I don't really even want to get the permit for one dollar because it's excess sand to provide because they have a word limit. You know, yeah, it's a bit process. Um, monitoring, uh, any discussion on monitoring, reporting, or, or reporting cycles or anything for this? Um, we could certainly work that into the orders of conditions that... Um, well, I guess I should step back first, Amy, and ask, are there any resource concerns that would really lead us to want to monitor or have specific reporting? I think that what I would want to <laughs> see is after nourishment, have an inspection done, like for me to come out them to tell me when it's going to be done. I usually know anyways, because the town's doing it. But like when the town would be doing that, the dredge would be doing that section to um, ensure compliance, which is what I try to do for the town beaches too. Right. Um, Any dunes that um, would be vulnerable to, um, you know, being, you know, overtopped or, you know. This, prop, this area is all pretty much revetted. Right. So it really has, there's almost, there's not a lot of room at high tide in some of these areas. Yeah. Um, it pretty much goes from coastal beach straight to um, a wall, a rock wall. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the campgrounds-ish area. Yeah. So. How about um, any language on the extent of the nourishment footprint? You know, just uh, nothing below mean high water. Nothing below mean high water. The extent of their, you know, 800 linear feet, 850 linear feet. Okay. I would suggest, if possible, and this really is the dredge operator um, way to do it, put more of it if you can on the west. Yeah. Um, and let it migrate on its own east. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll uh, we'll talk about. Uh, reporting requirements next hearing, you know, something like a annual check off on what's done. Thank you. So Stand we will have to continue this, yeah. Sorry. Can we have a motion on this, please? Okay, um, I will move. Or do we, you saying we don't, we can't vote we, tonight we, we because of the NHE. We're going to continue. Yeah. We're going to continue to the 19th. Yeah. Other than this one, I would not, because I, hopefully this one will be fairly quick um, to kind of wrap things up with heritage and conditions. Um, I would not put any more on October 19th if we have any more continuances tonight. All right, so we can have a motion for continuance, at least, yeah. in the 19th. Okay. I'll move that we continue the hearing on the notice of intent for Air Lane Property Owners Association, Air Lane Beach, to our meeting of October 19th, 
Thank you. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. So backing up, the next item on the agenda is 10 Braddock Street, Map 7, Partial F20 for the addition septic, hardscape, and landscaping. Good evening. Oh, whoops. There is, I don't know if you could possibly hang it from that, but there is a um, easel kind of if you, if you want. So um, before they start, I handed you a few new things out. Um, you have a, you know, the newest landscape plan, which is from 930, and you have, as of today, mitigation calculations that I left on your table. Came in. So you, we're all looking at the same thing. There's been a couple of revisions. Thank you. I'm Stephanie Sequin, I'm an engineer with Bradley Wilcox, and I'm representing Sam Park, who is here this evening, and Kimberly Mercurio, who is the landscape architect. Um, this property is located at 10 Braddock Street. It's um, a little bit to the west of the Bank Street Beach. The property extends from the south side of Braddock Street down to the, the beach on Nantucket Sound. The southerly portion of the property, which I'm not able to show on the site plan. I sacrificed that to be able to put the the site, uh, you know, at a larger scale to to be a little more easy to read. But the southerly portion of the property, which is not shown on the site plan, um, is Coastal Dune. It um, was the toe of the the landward toe of the Coastal Dune was delineated by uh, coastal geologist Stan Humphreys. Um, the property also lies within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, again, off to the, to the very south um, of the property, that's a V zone, uh, ele elevation 13. But the area of the property closest to the street is an A zone. The um, flood elevation is 11. And we've um, traced that. It actually kind of wraps in around from the seaward side of the property and um, covers part of the, uh, the landward side of the property closest to the street. So it sort of comes up above elevation uh, 11 and then drops back down to below elevation 11. So we've shown the, um, the toe of the coastal dune and the 50 and 100 foot buffers from the edge of the dune, as well as the extent of the land um, subject to coastal storm flowage. The exist, there's an existing um, four-bedroom house on the property. Um, according to the assessor's records, it was built in 1941. The structure is almost entirely within the 50-foot buffer to the, to the coastal dune. Uh, the site is developed with a Cape Cod lawn and hardscaping that surrounds the building. Uh, there is a pervious driveway and um, a, a couple paths that lead from the building down across the dune and down to the beach. Um, the Title V system was upgraded in 2006. Um, Sam and his family have uh, spent uh, summer vacations here at this location for roughly 20 years. Um, Back in 2004, they rented initially, and um, in 2014, were fortunate enough to be able to uh, purchase the property from the previous owner when they put it up for sale. So they um, do have a an attachment to this location and to this building. So um, they would like to. Um, expand the building to make it more suitable for year-round use, give them more space, but also want to preserve the original building um, as much as possible. So what's being proposed here is to keep the, um, the, the main part of the existing building, 
remove the the porch, the um, enclosed sort of wraparound porch on the south and east side of the building, as well as a, a small kitchen bathroom wing. Um, so eliminating a lot of that existing structure that's within the 50-foot buffer, and more importantly, that's closest to the toe of the dune, and <coughs> um, re expand it on the landward side of the existing building um, with a, an addition and a connector that will connect the, the new part of the structure to the existing um, building. Uh, a portion of that new addition um, is within <coughs> the 50-foot buffer. We, in order to connect it to the existing building, we really have uh, no choice but to have new structure within the 50-foot buffer. Um, the septic system will be upgraded with um, a Title V compliant uh, system. It's entirely located <coughs> outside of the 100-foot buffer to the coastal dune and outside of the um, land subject to coastal storm flowage. We've kept it in the, the northeast corner as far as we could get it away from the resource area and at the, the higher location. And we've tried to keep the, um, place the uh, new structure as close to that system as we could to, again, maximize the, the um, setback from the resource area. Uh, the driveway will be reconfigured. Um, to access the, the, the proposed garage. Um, most of that new driveway is outside of the 100-foot buffer, just a very uh, small portion that um, extends into the 100-foot buffer. So um, we've greatly reduced the square footage of the driveway that is within jurisdiction. And um, upon completion of the construction, the disturbed areas will be revegetated and mitigation uh, plantings will be provided in accordance with the plan that um, Kimberly Mercurio has prepared. Um, I included, and hopefully you've gotten a, a copy of the um, existing and proposed coverage calculations. I broke down uh, the existing coverage within the zero to 50 foot buffer, within the 50 to 100 foot buffer, and breaking it up between um, structure, uh, meaning building and or deck versus hardscaping such as patios, uh, stepping stones, uh, driveways, etc. cetera. Um, so to, to just quickly summarize what those uh, numbers show, in the zero to 50 foot buffer, the um, square footage of structure is increasing by about seven square feet. So for all intents and purposes, it's, it's practically a wash as far as existing structure in the 50-foot buffer versus proposed structure in the 50-foot buffer. The main difference being the structure that's eliminated in the 50-foot buffer is on the seaward side of the house versus the, the new structure in the 50-foot buffer is on the landward side of the existing house. So same square footage, but further from the resource area. Uh, within the 50 to 100 foot buffer, we have a 2,437 square foot increase in structure uh, over what currently exists. Um, overall, in the as far as the hardscaping, uh, within the zero to 50 and also within the 50 to 100, we have uh, reduced the, the area of the hardscaping. So according to those numbers and according to your uh, regulations where you want to see um, three to one mitigation for uh, increase in the 50 foot buffer and two to one mitigation for increase in the 50 to 100 feet, I feel like an accountant with throwing all these numbers at you, but. Um, <coughs> I've come up with a required um, 4,895 square feet of mitigation. Um, on the plan that Kimberly has prepared, uh, she is showing 5,579 <coughs> square feet of mitigation, so well over, I believe, what the, the minimum is required. And again, I want to emphasize that's not even taken into account the reduction in the hardscaping. We're, we're not really using that <coughs> as credit for, for mitigation. So I think um, what's being proposed will, will result in an overall benefit uh, to the resource area and to the buffer. 
Um, I've included on the plan our typical construction notes. Uh, fabric silt fence will be installed along the limit of work um, throughout construction <coughs> until the disturbed areas are revegetated. The demolition material from the, uh, for the removal of the existing structure uh, will uh, either be placed directly into trucks for removal from site or in a dumpster that's maintained on site. Um, similarly, for the excess excavated material, uh, will be placed directly into trucks for removal, uh, no stockpiling on the site. Um, gutters and down, either gutters and downspouts to dry wells or crushed stone at the roof drip line will be used to contain roof runoff and all the disturbed areas will be restored uh, in accordance with the approved planting plan. Um, I think that's all I have on uh, the proposed project. Um, Kimberly is here and can, if you have any specific questions about the plan that she's um, prepared. Um, and Sam wanted to just say a little bit about his. Yes, I appreciate one meeting on a Sunday uh, night. But, um, we actually tried, to, we looked at three different scenarios for this house. One was just to widen the house because um, the, the house actually has very nostalgic value to me. My kids, all four of my daughters are in this neighborhood. And quite candidly, I think what's going to happen is they're going to get the new house with my wife and I'm going to get the little shack that's <laughs> um, It's okay. I actually Everyone am going to beach happy. bum. Everyone will be happy and I'll just be fine. But what we looked at first was just widening the house, and oh. it, it, um, it dawned on us that it was in the 50 foot, and there was, even though we were glad to mini gate. So we looked at putting it right behind the house as an extension, and then realized there was a finger here that runs between us and our neighbors that actually creates a, a jurisdictional limit. So we kind of did this jog of a house to try to put the house where there's already an existing driveway. I mean, the, nearly the entire area, if you go down there and look at it, is essentially driveway for 40 years. So we put the you know, our, our theory was put the house where the driveway is, you know, put the garage and the driveway outside of the buffers, and then we really do like the natural habitat. Unfortunately for this area, that um, I don't know if you recall, several years ago, it was actually almost 10 years ago, um, the dunes caught on fire, and I think um, the um, fire department came in and killed most of the dune grass there. So we were actually going to get ready to replant all the dunes anyway. So whether it's 4,000 square feet or 6,000 square feet, I think our goal and my wife's goal is to actually bring on Kim to just really renaturalize the whole area. All the way. And you know, assuming that I have a permission to plant more than less, we're okay with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, the house plant that we had was also trying to address uh, kind of a critical thing. One of my favorite friends is, lives next door to me, Alan Payne. He's been here for 100 years with his wife. And um, we moved the house back in the direction we did and set it so it didn't block his view from where he sits. He and I are both a little over 60, so we just kind of sit and drink scotch together. Um, but, uh, you know, so we tried to set the house back so that the angles didn't bother his view as well, and we tried to keep the house low. Um, it's not easy to get a house under 30 feet, but we'll keep it, you know, for 20 years or so. We have the benefit that we're lower than most of our neighbors, so I think they'll still see over us. Um, not that that's your issue, but as a neighbor, it's kind of my issue. And so where it's set, situated has maybe a lot of thought put into it, just in case anyone's curious as to why it's where it is. So thank you very much for your consideration. Do you want to get into the plantings, or? Um, I think Stephanie pretty much covered the plantings. Um, uh, I guess the main takeaway is that we're offering a lot more mitigation planting than required. Um, and as Sam mentioned, he's happy to do more. I wasn't supposed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Amy. Do you have a comment? Yeah. Please? Clarification question first on the. New, the calcs that you provided me today, Stephanie, was a 9-30-2022 date. On the bottom, so you have total mitigation required 4,895, <coughs> but provided you have 9,000. I thought you had said, I thought it that says 5,134. The, the 9345 was from the original okay. um, mitigation plan that had been submitted and didn't reflect the okay. revised plan. All right, so I just so want to make sure I have the numbers right. Five, yeah, 5579 is what's... 5570. Currently being proposed. Thank you. Um, 
So there was, there was kind of a lot of back and forth about the numbers um, prior to this meeting. I now understand them. Thank you. Um, so they have requested a variance for work in the 50 foot no disturb zone. They are asking for seven square feet of more structure, but they're getting rid of 818 square feet of hardscape. Um, so that's your deck, your, you know, things other than house and deck. Um, so I think um, that additional seven square feet can be justified. So there is a large, um, let's see, between addition of structure, even though you're getting a reduction roughly of 14, you're getting roughly a 1,400 square foot reduction in hardscaping and an additional 2,442, no, 44 square feet of structure um, and in terms of house. So I think what they've provided in terms of numbers makes m enough sense. My one, one of my um, points, I guess, is the area, I don't know if I would consider the area that you could put as mitigation. I don't know if I would consider this as mitigation area. It's not directly, it is directly connected to your um, right of way area, which has some, a lot of invasive vegetation, but um, it's kind of up here and down here between the structures. This particularly, we look for mitigation to be contiguous with resource areas to mm -hmm. the extent possible mm -hmm. so that they provide habitat and, and other, qual um, other good things for the actual wetland itself, which is a dune here. So this particularly, like this section in here of 262 square feet of mitigation, I wouldn't consider that necessarily mitigation. And up here, um, I'm kind of inclined not to as well just because it's really bisected from the real resource in an area of itself. But I think you have enough of potential other mitigation to capture that. I'd have to do kind of the numbers. Um, but, okay, so we'd have to look at that. Um, the bare area of your dune, that was the area you said burned, right? That's it's this not, area. I, don't think, I think a large portion of it burned there. I remember it. I remember it. I wasn't there. I came back and just saw scorched and burned yeah. parts of the house down and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So if it you've been, a couple of the commissioners came out with me today. Oh, yeah. um, if they, you know, other people have been out to the property, you know that the parks have kept, the, it's a quite a large dune field, um, well, decently large dune field between them and the beach. And they've kept it very natural. There is this area up here where, um, I mean, dunes naturally do have some bare areas. Um, but it's probably also, ex the bareness is exacerbated um, by the whatever happened there. So they are, that's true mitigation in my mind of re trying to replant that dune and the species they provided to do so with the American beach grass would be appropriate. I might recommend adding something like seaside goldenrod or something else in there, things like that. Not a major change. So I guess at this point, I don't have more, the only question I have is we have not heard from Heritage mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, so we, again, this is not one we can close, um, vote on tonight, sorry. Um, but I think I wanna hear what the other commissioners have to say too. Thank you, Amy. Wayne, do you have any questions, comments? Uh, look, it's a pretty big project, but uh, to me, it seems like it's gonna be quite well, uh, you know, uh, nothing better than what's here now, in my mind, anyway. So, other than that, I don't know what they do. Okay, thank you. Alan? Yeah, I think it's a great plan. Do 
things that I noticed was that there's, uh, it looks like there's a structural connection between the new house and the existing house that is seeking to be predominantly within the zero to 50. Is there a need for that structural connection? Yeah, let me explain. We have, um, um, there's half of that connection is actually kitchen today. So if you look very closely, there's about a 10 foot four stall over the house with that section actually um, built in under the showing up too clearly on this. Okay. okay, so half of that is actually kitchen. So it, half of it is existing. It's existing. Okay. And then the other half really was the trade off of the porch. We basically took the porches down to make sure that it wasn't any more, but we needed connected because of the, uh, I guess, zoning thing to be able to connect back to the existing house. So we tried to make it originally work like a bigger house, but we made it uh, salty and wide to basically allow some surface area and uh, to make it easy and accessible. And that sure. was a zoning requirement? Yes. Okay. So the other question I have, which you may have considered, is, and again, I'm looking at trying to sort of minimize sure. as much as possible construction within the zero to 50, would there be any possibility of moving the, the new addition closer to the street? Which I think would, you know, at least reduce some of the structure within the zero to 50. So the distance that there basically, if you look, I think, um, at least what our architects have told us, is we have the reserve capacity for the additional depth of the field between the street and the garage and between the garage. So it's really a matter of the garage. Um, when you look at the L shape, which is the sort of the new house mm -hmm. uh, addition, that's on the 24 foot garage that connects with that house and stairway up the stairs to the upper and second floor. Mm -hmm. And then a 24 foot wide main house structure. So that, it, it, when you add all that up, I don't think we have a lot more room for the new history um, with the garage that would allow us drive it completely out of the buffer. So the, the notion was by putting, um, so we moved it back as far as we could without encroaching on the reserve septic field. Okay. And we have the fact that I need a certain amount of driveway to put in the, uh, the architects to be able to get off the street and be able to turn around. And there was currently two driveways near the site. Mm -hmm. And so I thought we could, our, the, the plan seemed to make some sense as we, kept the garage as close to the street as it could go, which is what Septus planned. Mm -hmm. So we, we basically left the connection. Oddly enough, if we moved the house further away from the existing house, we actually increased, it's the weirdest thing, if we moved the new house addition further away from the existing house, we actually increased the, uh, the impact area because the finger zoom actually creates a parallel 50 foot buffer line. If you were to look at sort of the nominal, you know, where the uh, zoom is, um, we've been moving out of the area, but because they, you know, it's almost parallel to our pathway, just moving it up and changing it just means we're building more structure in terms of the connector itself. So the uh, connector turned out to be 20 Excuse me. What's I'm now? sorry. Feedback is driving me crazy. Oh, you just moved the paper. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so that was, it was kind of interesting, but we tried to move it. Um, the reason the connector is 20 feet long is we tried to move it in and out as close and as pretty much defined by street reserve septic garage stairwell and the 24 foot wide structure. Okay, thank you. So that's the end of the question. John, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, so um, just looking at the planting plan here, um, it's not clear to me what here is <coughs> existing and what here is in planting. There on the south East corner, there's some scrub oaks that have been hacked at. There's some cherries on the property. Corners, and you're showing oaks here, and they're sort of overlapping. I'm just confusing what's what's. Yeah, the survey. So, are you talking about? No, southeast. Here, south here. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this shows all of. I should have had a better lesson, so I apologize. But these larger circles. That overlap, those are all the existing. That's so all existing. So are they being left? Those will be left, yes. But the, but it's like mown underneath mm -hmm. the, the yeah. trees or in between the trees. And you can see on 
the um, the right side of the site plan, or I guess they show on, on both sides of the site plan, the existing trees that are within the mown yard area. So there'd be understory shrubs going in there. So all those trees on the south end of the property are going to stay? Those there's, stay. There's a cedar there? That yep. You're showing cedar, and that's Here. the end of the... Yeah. What about the cedars that are in the northeast part of the no, other side? You're not, Those you're stay. showing oaks, but we're a bunch of like red cedars or something. Right at the, as you drive in? Are those what the, what you're talking about? Yeah, but they're more to the west, I mean east. Up here. They're not yeah. shown on the plan, but those stay. I don't think it's that on the survey. Well, That's where your leech rule is from. Yeah, yeah. there but are. there's some right along the edge here. <coughs> okay, I believe those stay. So there are, um, I think it's this sort of grove of cedars that's just to the east of the driveway. They're in the garage. So they're yeah. Yeah. Right, so those will come out. They are no, I'll outside. Be in the <laughs> no, I'll be in the garage. <laughs> they are outside the 100 foot buffer to the dune. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, so. so just along the lines of what Amy was talking about is having more contiguous stuff, what, what is happening just to the south, to the, and I think it says here, portion of existing to remain, I don't know what that is referring to. It's referring to the dwelling. The dwelling. Oh, okay. oh, I see, there's an arrow there. But what about that space between the planting area there on the right side? space that's shown as blank. No, oh, just that white space to down Here. and to the right. This? No. I think this. Here. Yes. This. 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 That is existing. That is doing. That's going to remain. So that's all doing it. Right. right. And that that has, um, I don't know, bayberry or? So it's that has shrubs. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got some existing. It was actually covered with um, four years ago timber and old oak got reserved and asphalt shingles were set oh. and we actually um, restored it to the uh, to a natural habitat. So I guess I can't take credit for having done it in the past, but that's, uh, that's what's there. So I think um, Tim has told us that's good stuff, but we're happy to leave it. It's all native. Okay, so just one other question, which is there is a path over there on the right. It's not clear where that is. Yeah, there's a path at. here. Yes. There's a path here. Are you leaving? It seems um, it's going to remain. And that I mean, has steppers on it. Over here it does. Over up that here. That are shown here. Were they counted in the landscape? Steppers are up here, and we're planting over those. Right. So. What the, do you mean you're planting over them? You're removing them and here. Planting? This part of the path would be removed up here okay. because we're right. again the because Amy was. talked about it, I remember now, we talked about it on site a year, like probably not quite a year ago, but I we talked about, you know, one path, um, using one path, and not two going forward. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Thanks, John. Brad? So I guess before I forget, so <coughs> will that path, should that be on the plan? Shouldn't that be eliminated, that, that well, eastern path? Well, here it is. This part of it is But it will be vacated? Um, it could be vacated. I just didn't include it in the mitigation plan. I mean, to, I guess to vacate it totally, it would have to be planted, right? Right. Um, okay, so for mitigation, everything shown in light green is what you're proposing this to mitigation. Green yellow is, is what's proposed mitigation. Yeah. You see the circles and mm -hmm. then the code. Yeah. There's little areas between the structures, and then kind of to the south uh, goes across the property here, and this large yeah. swath of uh, bare dune. Right. So I guess I'm feeling there's a, a really large increase in footprint. Um, 
there, there's not much of an effort to pull out of the zero to 50, which is disappointing for a project of this size with a large mitigation requirement. And I, I'm just seeing you know, fractured mitigation. I don't think it's continuous. I don't think it's like the whole area will be mitigated for, yet um, the project is claiming that square footage. So I, I just think there needs to be, um, this has to be redrawn to show um, where you'll actually be mitigating um, new habitats. You know, the, the, the lower dune area, the whole area is not going to be mitigated for. There's no reason to. So there doesn't need to be a, a 2,080 square foot mitigation. So I, um, I feel. Are you proposing to mitigate that whole barren area? I don't think it's necessary. It, it's, um, it's really, it's a no disturb zone. Um, so if, if there's a few pockets of um, bare area that could be mitigated for, that could be claimed. But to, to claim the whole 2,000 square feet, I don't think. It's all bare. The whole thing is bare? This, mm -hmm. yeah. So this whole area, if you, yeah, yeah. This whole area is bare right now. It's mm -hmm. vegetated here. Yep. This is the area that for some something happened to. Right. Or there are naturally there is some small pockets. This is more than just a small pocket. Yeah. This whole area is bare, and then it becomes dune again. So. It, it, is it should it be a dune? Should it be dune grass? Yeah. Or, or should it just be bare? It, I I have pictures from 20 years ago or 10 years ago where yeah. it was um, really lush. Yeah. I so think that's it. Why, that's why something we were going to ask to do it regardless of rebuilding the house or not, not to you know, negotiate against myself, but I'm just, for us, that area should be replanted because yeah. that's yeah. what we're there to do. I think it'll provide Can better habitat, better? more stability. Sure. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, that's a thank you for clarifying that. It, um, it, it just, I didn't expect the entire area to, to need mitigation. Um, but I just, I kind of feel like there, there hasn't been a large effort so to. So this is the house and that's the, the bare area. It's so it's 75% bare? It's almost all bare. Wh when was this photo taken? Uh, that's Google Earth. So you can see the building next door that's under construction. So that's within the last two years. Two years, yeah. certainly. It's, w it's probably. Is there less vegetation that's shown here? Because there's, there's several large patches of vegetation out there. That's covered by the white area on the land that's under existing vegetation. Yeah. I'd be happy to have you over and then just kind of walk it so you can see really what the parks are. Yeah, I, I, again, I, you know, very large increase in footprint. Um, request to have a a slight increase in zero to 50, and this, this commission has not supported those types of, of increases in a long time. I realize it's only seven square feet, but I, I certainly don't support a variance for any increase in zero to 50 at this point. Um, I would rather see the structure move back, as Jim suggested, um, and, and to have reduction of lawn and then have the structure move back, and the, that would, to me, be really substantial mitigation for this project. I agree with Amy's point on the area that's north of the house it is not contiguous. It really, it, it can't be, you know, the two to one mitigation. I, I just don't think it qualifies for that. And I, and I think some of the low area that Jim, I mean, that um, John talked about, um, some of that has things that are going to stay. So should that be 100% of that area be considered mitigation? So I, I'm concerned about those couple of points. And, um, and I, I just like to see a greater effort. You're, you know, you're changing every, everything's being raised, right? There's nothing mm -hmm. remaining, or you just yeah, this is remaining. that's remaining. Yeah. But the the connector is is all new. It's on the driveway. Yeah. Right? Half of it's there. Yeah. Half of it's the kitchen. The yeah. other half is um, just an extension of the kitchen. Right. And that area currently, just if it helps, was um, um, I think when we started this process a couple of years ago. First the main elimination we had here had thinner dune. And so once we put the thinner dune, that's the area that's kind of fallen through and hit the dune. So that, that, that dune was actually created about 25 years ago when we excavated and put the water main um, in the pathway. And apparently that's where they put all the sport up. And, that, and that's obviously what's pretty natural now. So I'm mm -hmm. not trying to argue with you that it's not. It's just that's how it kind of evolved. Yeah. That's one of the things that happened. But that area currently is a patio and driveway and same with where the the portion of the house that falls within that finger dune 50 as it's called is uh, all currently driveways as well 
Well, if you could explore, you know, what Jim requested for bringing the project back, and then maybe just evaluate some of my comments on, and Amy's comments on mitigation, um, I, I think that would, you know, go a long ways. Um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff here, I think, what you're proposing. It just, it, it is a very large increase in footprint, um, and I, I'd like to see a little tighter mitigation. Maybe some lawn, you know, trading off lawn. And I, and I, I, I still, you know, uh, what I'll do is I'll look at Google Earth images over time. I, I don't know if that's 100% mitigation for that lower dune area. But certainly not in this photograph. And the, be the best way to do is to go see yeah. it. Yeah. All right, thanks. Brad, just if it helps, we're not adverse to increasing the amount of dune mass we have. It's just, you know, our, our ideal goal would be to use the whole unit as natural. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's an issue in my previous years. I know it carries height for the architects and get that street into the property, but to get it as close to the street as possible, mm -hmm. that's kind of where it fell. Yeah. It, in the house, the, the existing house is not going to be raised. So no. that, that's, okay, so that's another limiting factor for for you. I mean, that's the part that I'm trying to hold on to, but right. it really is a nostalgia issue. So yep. when I have my uh, kids and four generations of my five owners who are friends of mine, their kids play head markings on the cedar wall in the house. So uh, maybe after I'm gone, we'll give you one of these. Okay. Yep. It is sort of a nostalgic memory for me. Well, I'm just one vote, but that's my recommendation is to consider what you can do along those lines. Sam Fletcher? Yeah, well, we definitely clarified because I was getting a little bit confused about whether the dwelling was being raised because you were talking about removal of debris and everything. Is that from things like the patio and well, things the, of that Well, the hardscaping, nature? but also the, um, the, the enclosed porch and this um, kitchen wing mm -hmm. will be removed. So, but the so house sort itself of like, isn't. So. Right, so the, the core of the house is remaining. So it's that exterior, the, the attached porch that's going to be yeah. demolished and And not, taken not away. that it matters, but the new, the, the new addition is two stories or? It's actually one, it's more of a cape, so it's one oh. story with the um, second floor built into the eaves and it's in the gable. Okay. That's all. Okay, thank you. Just for clarity, the debris that I was talking about was sort of the dip left to me by the former 80 year old lady on the house. And we didn't discover it until, you know, I, my kids started building fortresses out of it. And it was, <laughs> it wasn't really that safe. Um, it's two dumpsters full. A <laughs> couple questions I had. Uh, is, is this on the sewering plan? On what? The town sewer plan. Not that I know of. It's not. I honestly have the top of my head into that. I don't either. No. And I mean, had, have you considered an IA system on this property, given um, its proximity to the to the sound? Um, we have not discussed that possibility. Um, what I've <coughs> laid out for the new system does comply with Title V and, and Town of Harwich, but. Yeah. I mean, given, uh, again, given the location and its proximity to the beach, um, you know, my, my preference is generally to see an IA system in this kind of a location. If it were back another couple hundred yards or so, we, then it would be different. What it, what it does, it removes nitrogen from the effluent from the sewage, the sewing system. Um, so it has significantly less impact on the environment than um, than a, an ordinary Title V. If it's used year round, if it's not used year round, it has like negligible, almost negligible. Impact. Right, but your plans are to, yeah. I'll be there, yeah. He'll be there. <laughs> um, and then a question on, when you did your calculations for hardscape, what did you consider, how did you define hardscape? Um, whatever's not vegetated. So we included um, the stepping stones around the existing and around the proposed, um, let's see, looking at the existing, the, the entire driveway, 
uh, which is currently stone pervious right. and will remain pervious. Uh, so that's that's considered hardscaping. The uh, the driveway, uh, the patio, uh, both there's existing patio and proposed patio and stepping stones. I separated out the actual building and deck as um, structure mm -hmm. versus the existing. hardscaping on existing and proposed. Okay. So where we have gravel driveway and the 5100 on the existing plan that's now becoming structure? Yes. For the most part? Yes, for the most part. There is some uh, some proposed very, driveway very small and amount, yeah. stepping stones in 50 to 100, but for the most part, it's um, structure. Yeah. So, and that is the uh, 2,457 square feet um, additional structure that I'm basing the um, mitigation calculations on. The hardscaping in the 50 to 100 is going from um, 1,195 square feet to a, just over, no, I'm sorry, that's not right. Um, oh, it's the existing hardscape in the 50 to 100 is going from 1,622 square feet down to a thousand one, one thousand, square feet. Yeah. So there's a six hundred twenty one mm -hmm. square foot reduction in hardscaping in the fifty to one hundred. There's an eight hundred eighteen square foot reduction in hardscaping in the zero to fifty. But a lot of that reduction in the fifty one to one hundred, for example, is now becoming structure. So you're taking pervious driveway and creating a hard structure. We are very definitely and I, I tried to make it clear um, proposing an additional 2,437 um, square feet of structure in the yeah. 50 to 100. Yeah. And we are mitigating, we, we are trying to mitigate at 2 to 1 for that additional structure. Not taking for the reduction in hardscaping. The other thing, to Brad's point, the uh, the amount of structure, new structure that's going to be in the zero to fifty, it seems to me you could, by shifting this the whole new structure east, which you have a lot of room it appears on that side of the lot, that you could get a good chunk of that new structure that's presently in the zero to fifty out of it. There was an interesting. Uh, so if you look at the, old, the existing structure where the kitchen is on the existing structure, mm -hmm. that's a 12 foot gap that allows us to fill the connector. So the connector is kind of defined in that location. Mm -hmm. The connector is <coughs> and it no longer lines up with the existing well. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. no, I understand you completely, so but everything to the north of that connector also <coughs> would, be shut, would be moved over. I take a look at that. Yeah. I'm not sure if it lines up with the way the, yeah. I mean, that existing structure where the kitchen is presently on the existing house, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have a straight <coughs> pass through to the new structure. You could, and it looks like it's a bathroom anyhow that you're putting into that. It's a brief, yeah. Yeah. So I'm <coughs> wondering if there isn't some opportunities there to move everything east. And um, you have room with your septic tanks. And there's 11 feet. Are actually pretty tight to the septic? Um, there, there may be a <coughs> feet to, to play with. Just something, that if you could look at that, would be, be helpful too. Um, and then down on the, on the um, dune area, now you have this bare area that you are going to be replanting. And just to the west of that, there's another bare area to the west of this footpath that goes down that is labeled as sand. I'm not sure why you would, if, if your intent is to try to naturalize as much of this as possible, why that wouldn't also be included. Um, so, yeah. go on. Um, <coughs> this area has been just where 
Sunday as I was doing this. My wife and a gentleman, when people would come down the path, I'd leave a couple chairs out there, kind of like an elderly beach. So I stand in the carol and just walk along right down the path that leads to the church building. Go drive down, park in my car, and walk on and sit in church. Uh, so that's just been a historically an area that we've used to sit in. Uh, and so it used to feel like a beach for some of the, uh, our neighbors. It's now kind of go all the way down to the ocean. So it's, it's been that way for a while, so we just kind of would like to keep that if possible. I think there's other areas that I would be glad to maybe on the other side of the path here. Yeah, there's opportunities on the other side of the path here. It doesn't show too much, but there's a lot of rare areas down here. Um, there's reasonably five or 600 square feet more than you need. So, I mean, we're keeping that off. Would you mind? You can, you can see the chairs. Small reduction. Right. Small reduction yeah, that's the area we're talking about. Both sides of the path, there's some big bare spots. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't really show up on the survey. Right. Okay. Um, then that you can make it work. All right. I think that's the only comments I have. I think there's just some food for thought to you'll be coming back, obviously, and um, be having to make some changes as it stands now so you know if you could take those into consideration as well sure can uh, I just um, uh, I try to quickly do some math um, and looking at the uh, proposed um, mitigation in the northwest corner um, along with the proposed mitigation that's um, basically adjacent to the building uh, I added those two figures together and came up with roughly 1,200 square feet. Um, so if we're not counting that as mitigation, uh, taking that 1,200 away from the 5,579 um, leaves us with 4,380. And what I had calculated is 4,895. So we're about 515 square feet shy of, of what required so I'm it sure we can come up with that somewhere else yeah. it gets a little more you said it's 1200 square feet I'm looking more at like 1770 square feet if you add those together I think you may have subtracted um, 1510 is it 50? maybe I'm, I'm probably looking at older plans no so the north the northwest the north area one? is 938 oh square I, feet. I, I, I am looking, looking at, at an older old one plan. sorry let me yeah. get rid of this sorry right. sorry about that no no problem going to not put it back in the file. Yeah. Yeah. But we can, we can, we can make that happen. Yeah. Ernie, if I can add along those lines, if you could just give us a little information on what you plan to do with the bare area um, in terms of, you know, is it just proposed to be all plantings of, you know, beach grass or just what you hope to do? Because I, I still have concerns whether that should qualify as 100% of the footprint for mitigation. So a little more detail on what you so was that was your I, I was trying to write down notes was that one area that you said maybe in in addition to the beet grass some other goldenrod a little bit maybe a little bit more diversity not okay. don't I mean it's a dune just so don't go crazy but a little bit more diversity okay I'm just American beach grass okay just okay build on Brad's point. I mean, Brad made, I think it bears repeating, is that part of what's in the mitigation area is not just in the dune, but in that south of the existing house, basically. There's already vegetation there, and you're counting that as mitigation where there's already vegetation, I think. The trees? The trees, yeah. And the cherries that are over on the southwest corner, cover a big spot and you're including that in your mitigation area, but those are existing cherries that are already there. I don't think it's exactly right to be including those as mitigation area because they're pre-existing. It, it, it's, so to speak, I'm not speaking for or against, but I'm saying it, they're adding some diversity. So whether it should count equal, I don't know, but 
I think there is some value to it. Yeah. But right. maybe, is it not, is it equal? Speaking of those oaks, they look pretty highly compromised over the years. I do wonder if it would be better to flush cut them and manage them differently going forward, looking at the health of the trees, because they looked they're pretty, sweaty. Un, pretty unhealthy. So to, if there's a way to better, let them actually become um, fruiting species, you know, that actually are gonna probably get acorns and things like that. You can do that in a large shrub manner yeah. um, or encourage it in the year, something like that. Where is it going? There's stuff you don't see. Yeah. But I, I, do, I do understand your point. Typically, we look at areas that are already treed as not typically. Oh, we're thinking more like understory. And I that's understand. part of the reason that we're, we're offering a little bit more yep. than required yep. to cover that. Understood. But, you know, we can do more. Understood. Just a, just a question. Yeah. Someone mentioned there's a new house right beside it being built. Mm -hmm. So that went before this morning, obviously. Yes. Which raises another question that might be important. What are you going to be doing with the lawn? <laughs> <laughs> we, I, so I have to. My wife wants clover. Like, well, clovers are good. Yeah. I, know, but I took them to the neighbor. I hope you don't mind. So I don't tell mind. your clients. Mm -hmm. I was like, I took them over there today to show them how good it can look. That was incredible. They were. We're it talking was about was fertilizer restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. I, really I, I told you that it was her brother. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure I can afford, but you know, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We did that together. It might take me yeah. an extra year to, you know. But that's all native. Everything yeah. there is native. The lawn is, you know, we put a lot of clover in there. It's Very just, impressive. Yeah. So it just, it can work. How much topsoil? Huh? How much topsoil did you bring in? How much? Loam is under no, that it's grass. actually the f was a lot of loam there already. Right. So they yeah, scraped that had been it. Lawn previously. Yeah, that was all lawn. Yeah. But My the whole back garden was done. Yeah. 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 We actually took pictures of it because the town is we're starting to talk about fertilizer restrictions in the town, and we wanted to show how nice something that doesn't use fertilizers and that's native can look. Yeah. Yeah. So. We like yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure I can afford what he did. But uh, he's got I, a lot of other things. Yeah. Yeah. You're more like plant. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm not trying to say you should do what he did, but I'm just talking about the log piece. I brought them over We're to show. We're looking for him. a little natural. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate that. Yep. Because when we walked it, uh, it was pretty clear. Some of those oak trees are pretty scraggly. I would love to be able to replace them and can't go in there to cut yeah, them. oaks yeah. are can be to tricky to sometimes. It's hard to They're yeah to get something. In, in fact, I green. was, I don't, you know, Barry Johnson, who's the tree farm. Yeah, but we were going on the property next door. We were going to put more juniper <coughs> right up against the dune, and he advised us, no, no, no. Like there's certain species you can't just plant that close. Yeah, and there's certain species that will take. So it's yeah. like it's all kinds of microclimates. And yours, and yours That's why I was encouraging here. trying yeah. to flush cut and encourage either yeah. a new healthy leader there or encourage it into more of a large shrub because try, you have a better chance of doing that than getting a new transplant to take there. Yeah. Okay. So where does that leave us? I think, um, so we can, we can discuss um, if you have any more questions going forward, but um, we look for continuance. Our next meeting is absolutely slammed, um, and you would have to have stuff to us in a week anyways. Um, so we're looking at a continuance to November. Geez, that sounds an awful long no. time away, but it's not. October. November 2nd. And we would need new info by the 26th of October, please. Does that work for you? The 26th of October. October for okay. new info, yep. Okay. And we have a motion, please, for a continuance. Yeah. I'll move that we continue the hearing to the notice of intent to send graphic trees at 7 parcel F20 to our meeting of November 2nd, 2022. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries.
Thank you very much. Excuse me. Where should I find out more information about that clover lawn you were talking about? I wish I was sitting there myself. I can give it to um, you, too, but Kim probably has I better. Can, I can send you an email. Some okay. Send it to me. You, yeah, can buy the so, you can buy the sod. It's a yes. mix of... Oh, really? Oh, that, that was sod. It, you oh, can buy I it thought like it was that. seed. Okay, I'm no, sorry. No, that was sod. All seed right. is easier. Seed, you All just right. broadcast. Yeah, yeah. This was actually sod. Is it a special kind of clover? Oh. Um, it's, they call it. It's not micro, though. but it doesn't. It doesn't stay micro, micro. It's, no. but it doesn't get crazy either. Yeah. But it's clover, and there's a lot of benefits to it. Yeah. Like but the bees. Yeah. But a thousand times more yeah. bees in a. Well, I've got a little bit of a fear of clover. <laughs> but, but yeah, they yeah. love that stuff. Uh, but yeah. that's so you can buy it as sod. It's a little bit more expensive, but you can. I, I forgot. Know I didn't know. Not, but I will so be here this weekend if anyone wants to come down and walk it. Brandon or John, I'm happy to have you come over. Um, I can give my phone number and then just call me. Yeah, just yeah, leave me your phone number and I'll give it to them. Okay, great. It's right great, on there thank somewhere. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure yeah I'll me. distribute yeah, thank it. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey Wayne. No. Did you see the lot next door to there? No, I haven't been down there, but I will go check it out. Yeah, it's worth a if drive. If they don't mind. Um, so I think their security system kept, it oh. said, hello. I know. And I'm like, hopefully yeah. they don't. Thanks I told the much. contractors Thank who you. were there who we were. Tell you, I think it's <laughs> out of happy to miss those ones. I don't think we're really. As long as the owners don't just worry about it. Just because no. they they I think it's a camera. If the, uh, if the owners had been there, I probably wouldn't have done it. But it was just oh, a contract. It was the contract. All right, next. Talk, so I, I, our top floor and look down through the window. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you again. Good night. Uh, next item. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for an extension for the Oyster Creek Preservation Allen Harbor mm -hmm. Inlet. Yep. So they've asked, so they're asking for this to be put on a December 7th agenda. And I will tell you why. So the permit was issued in 2016 to dredge Oyster Creek, which is part of Allen Harbor. Um, and it was valid from 2016 to 2019. In 2019, they got a three year extension. With the COVID Extension Act, this permit is still valid um, without any say really from us until April, 2024. So they're being pretty proactive about this. So they don't actually expire for like another year and a half. Um, they want another three years on top of this. I think it's just hard to line up contractors sometimes. But I said I can't recommend an extension at this time because we never got the post dredge survey. We and that was to be done within 30 days, nor did we get the one and two year after post dredge surveys which were to show us whether or not salt marsh had been impacted, which if happens generally you say no dredging within 25 feet of the marsh. That's usually what um, uh, Army Corps says. But so we had said in our orders of conditions that if you dredge any within 30 feet of a marsh, we definitely want those areas resurveyed afterwards at the one and two year mark because we've had issues in the past year um, with the past dredging with Oyster Creek with potential over dredge and marsh slumping on some properties. So an update. Um, they have to do, they do have a post dredge survey. She hasn't gotten it to me yet. This is Arlene Wilson. I will get it to you when I do. Um, they did not do the one and two year after post dredge surveys and there were areas within 30 feet of the marsh that they did. So they've asked to be put on the December 7th meeting because they have to get a survey crew out there to relook at that. And nobody, you know, has availability right now. So you don't have to take an action, but. All right, so we don't need to do We'll anything. keep following through with them. If we don't get something, you know, if we don't hear from them, then you can talk about enforcement to, it, to require them. I'd say let's let them do it. We, um, they've generally been pretty responsive to us. Okay, okay good. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda, order of conditions for Two Old Chatham Road, Matthew 65, parcel N6-3 for the removal of structure and landscape. Yep. Uh, 
have any questions, let me know. No, the only thing on that is what I mentioned uh, when they were here is um, instead of just pumping that cesspool out, to have it pumped out and then dug out, but you make sure they get all the uh, sludge and oh, stuff right. that contaminates the side of the existing old cesspool and also in the bottom. And then That's great. Thank you. I've dug up many of those in my career, and uh, mm. they don't pump them clean because they use uh, vacuum pumps now, and they don't dare get the sand into the vacuum pump. Yeah, it's not like sure the old days when they didn't use mud suckers where they could have, they could pump the sand right out, but they don't do it anymore. Okay, I'll change that. Mm. Uh, and Amy, this, I'll, I'll probably be asking you this question a lot. <laughs> This order of condition doesn't um, require, doesn't contain a um, as uh, as built. No, because they're getting rid of all the structures. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anyone have any comments on this? Then? Nope. We have a motion, please. <coughs> okay. I'll move that we close the public hearing and issue the order of condition for two old Chatham Road, Mat 65, parcel M6-3, SE 32-2510. We have a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries. All right, next item, order of conditions for 116 Sisson Road, Map 30, parcel G5-4 for a new dwelling. So this one I would like to change the last condition about the as-built to um, something we're going to talk about later. But instead of saying upon request of a certificate of compliance, they would provide an as-built, I would like to start saying that they are to require, they are to provide an as-built within 90 days of com completion of construction. And I'll tell you why later. So, well, pers basically, sometimes we don't get as built until like several years or later. Um, and this is a, an accountability, you know, while they're still kind of on the project to do it. Can you, is it possible to make it a little tighter than that and say prior to issuance of an occupancy permit? Is, is that possible? I don't think we can hold up an occupancy permit. Like, Te technically, the building commissioner doesn't even need a sign off from me to issue an occupancy permit. So they do it because we all work together. But right. But so how do you define completion of construction? I guess that's what's bothering me. Is oh, I mean, it sounds like to a notify us. Endpoint, but is it? Is it? I mean, some people keep. I mean, if if it's a owner-occupied structure they're building, you know, some people take years. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is for the later conversation we're gonna have. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, but they notif they have to notice notify us of start work date. Maybe they have to notify us when the work is completed for, and we do a final walkthrough. Rather than a start pre-work meeting, we do a, an end work meeting, too. Or both, we do both. So what are you suggesting on, as far as wording on this? I think it, it's going to take a little more discussion, so we should just do what Amy was planning to do for this particular order of condition. Yeah. It's in the provisions of the then we can talk yeah, about and it. And this, say this 90 is days. different than an owner-occupied, too. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. <clears throat> so can we have a motion to approve this order of conditions as uh, proposed with the proposed amendment. Move. I'll move that we close the public hearing and approve the order of conditions with the proposed amendment for 116 Sisson Road, Map 30, Parcel G5 4, SC 32 2537. Second. Uh, discussion?
issues. So Mike Block was on the phone, um, tried to comment but couldn't be heard. He was going to say regarding Wayne's comment, we want additional language saying as the contractor determines feasible. Could you say that again, Amy? The contractor determines feasible. Well, wait, Hank, there's a motion, a second I, motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I am sorry. My apologies. Finish. Finish I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Yeah. Well, this will be discussion, right? But it's a different, different one. I'm, prior I'm one very that we sorry. Just um, yeah, discussion on this. There's, there's no mention in this about no irrigation in the zero to 100 talks about using temporary, but it doesn't prohibit. Let's see. Sorry. Hmm. There's no what? There's no prohibition on irrigation within the zero to 100. We usually don't prohibit irrigation, we prohibit fertilization. Which I thought we did. We usually allow irrigation within the 50 to 100, nothing in the 50 unless it's for mitigation planting. And a long time ago, we used to prohibit it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought we did. Trust me. We've kind of gotten, the, said, you know, the irrigation isn't so much the problem as the fertilization, fertilization. that goes along with it. Yeah. And I think it's been case by case. Yeah. If it's right next to a sensitive resource area. Yeah, which this is not. Right. All right, so we have a motion on the table. We have a seconded. Um, any other discussion then? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. So going back to the prior one then, I'm Amy, sorry. Old Chatham Road. Yeah, so Mike Locke texted, I think he um, had to press star six in order to be heard on, if he was on a phone. Um, and um, so what he would, Wayne's comment was not only to pump the old cesspool, but to scrape it to right. get out the sludge. Well, to dig it out. To dig it out. The old, all out that stuff, yeah. Um, they, Mike Locke would like additional language saying, um, as contractor determines feasible. That should be up to us to say to dig it out around to take the old box out or whatever it is, the structure, and fill it back in, clean what, it out. What is the chance that it wouldn't be feasible? I can't imagine. I know. I, I, would, I would go with Wayne's experience on this one. Yeah. 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 I would too, but. Is that acceptable to Michael? I don't know. I did tell him he needs to press star six um, if he calls in. There's only one person living there, so the septic can't be that bad. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, no, I mean, so it can be done. It's not a big oh, deal. Oh, it's very easy to do. It's not a big deal, right? And they're tearing the building down. They just take the So why don't... That's uh, kind of vague when you leave it up to the so contractors, you know? Board of Health doesn't inspect that? They would require pumping and filling. That's it, usually. Yeah. Doesn't. Well, yeah, it's not that difficult to do. It's why don't we put that, and then project. if Mike, at the future hearing, if Mike, you know, wants to come and talk to you about it, and then he can. Okay, um, we can amend the order of conditions. Yeah, we can make a slight, we can make a change. Yeah. Especially on that particular project, because elevation-wise, that house is not very, it's not up there. That's kind of flat there, that ground and that pond is right there. I'd be willing to bet the bottom of that cesspool was probably groundwater mm -hmm. yeah. okay all right so we'll leave it as it is and Mike if you are listening if you want to discuss that with Amy we can we can consider an amendment to that order of condition if uh, if necessary okay next item uh, order of conditions for 7 Lori Lane map 22 parcel a 4-3 for a retaining wall and site work <coughs> Comments? 
Can we have a motion on this one, please? Sure. <coughs> I'll move that we approve that we close the public hearing and approve the order of conditions for seven Rory Lane, Map 22, parcel A4-3, SE-2509. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda is application for a request for a certificate of compliance for 19 week Quasset Road map 5 parcel K1-41 uh, this was a conversion of a porch into a sunroom install a roof over another portion of the patio and then install solar panels on the roof Amy have comments on mm -hmm. this so at your last meeting where this was on the agenda the Commission instructed me to instruct mr. Stevens to remove that um, wire fence my apologies what didn't happen right after the meeting um, so a couple days ago I contacted mr. Stevens um, let him know what the Commission had said let him know that it's again on the agenda for this evening if he wanted to attend sorry that it was kind of late notice told him um, he could also be on the next next one um, he didn't really he didn't commit to either um, so I would say if he I tried to explain why that um, you know if fence whether or not that little fence is a structure is a com is a different issue other than that it's new activity within the zero to 50 that wasn't authorized for some and it's somebody who knows very well um, and that it was more recently put in after my final inspection had been made immediately after the work so um, I would recommend if he doesn't attend the next meeting or remove it by the next meeting that you issue an enforcement to remove it by a date certain. Um, do you suggest we not act on it tonight? Act on the cer certificate. Yeah, at this yeah I because I had told him he could attend this meeting or the next one. So let him right. see. Let's see if he attends the next one. Okay. And if he doesn't. And when he doesn't remove the, f the little fence, then we so can we'll just table this one for tonight. Yep. All right. Next item, then, it's a certificate of compliance request for Five Salt River Lane, Map Four, Parcel A One Dash B Thirty D Three for shorefront protection. Um, they just added the benchmarks to the wall this week, and they still need to be added to the plan, so it should be ready to go for next meeting. Uh, no action needed. And then a request for certificate of compliance for 39 Strandway Mark One Pass Map One Parcel J1 31A. This one is ready. <laughs> um, pool and landscape renovations, a lot of mitigation. So the changes to the landscape are in compliance, and the plantings have been in a few growing seasons and are doing really well. Um, being out to the site, I did, do not notice any um, use of. It's hard to tell with because um, it's only been you know a year or two to see about fertilizers but there's there's weeds growing in the lawn there's clover they're not applying herbicides anyways so but I would recommend a certificate of compliance with ongoing conditions not to fertilize or use chemicals okay can we have a motion to approve the certificate of compliance sure I'll move that we approve the certificate of compliance for 39 Strandway map one Parcel J1 31A SE32 2288. All right. Second, please. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now we have a show cause hearing for 16 Old Coast Lane that I understand will be continued. Yes. Um, we weren't able to schedule an on site with the owner and her representative with all the commission prior to this meeting. So Melissa has sent you a couple of dates, I believe next week when I'm, she's oh, been to the property. Um, if you haven't responded, please respond to her. Otherwise she's just gonna pick one. Um, it's when the owner is available as well. So we're gonna post an agenda. You can have an on-site meeting for that. All right. You can't issue any decisions, but you can have a fairly open discussion since it will be an advertised meeting so what date would that be Which, I, can you send a new note i will I, send I a new note seeing it. that's yeah. fine that's fine yeah. yep okay all right good thank you um 
So can we have a motion to, con well, do we need to even? No. no. We don't need to, do we? No. no. Um, so next we're into discussion and possible vote with an update on Chloe's path. Sorry, I just got a text from Mike Block again. He said, okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Chloe's path, um, roughly a month ago, we had Chloe's path on the agenda and the abutters, um, Mr. Gorey and Ms. Clovridge were present, um, kind of brought to the commission's attention several items. Um, after that meeting, the commission, or at that meeting, the commission directed me to try to make some more progress with that. Um, what I can say is there's been a lot of progress in the past month, in my opinion. This so the project was for the construction of the roadway, and it dealt with grading on the sides, is clearing and grading on the sides of the road as well. Back in 2016, this was permitted. The road was done by about 2018. At that time, it was going to be a nine lot subdivision with the ninth lot being gifted to the town for conservation purposes, but it's all wet. Um, currently, another project is in the works. Really doesn't pertain to us just yet. Really, we're focused on making sure the past project, which is the creation of the road, is in compliance. So, um, I have spoken with the neighbors, spoken with um, Actually, the owner of the property contacted me the other day, um, Mr. Donovan, and asked if he could take out the silt fence that's dilapidated and is garbage. Um, and I said, yes, you can just go ahead and do that. You do, he does not have an active permit right now. The permit is expired. But in terms of removing the silt fence, the site, um, the area on the side of the road, which is in the 100 foot buffer, is stable with grasses. Um, not an erosion threat there, so I instructed him he could take it out, didn't need to come back to the commission in order to do so. It was kind of a clean up. Also, um, clean up the debris, like the stuff people have been going up and dumping up there, like refrigerators and futons. Um, at the same time, he asked, or I had said, well, I'm going to take this opportunity to bring up the whole ASBO plan. Um, so I'd sent a couple letters over the years saying you should be doing, please do this. Um, he said he would get his engineer on it, on doing the as-built. Um, this would help us to determine whether or not potential claims of impact to the 100-foot buffer that we did not approve, if they occurred or not. Um, the commission, uh, in looking at the in looking at the subdivision plan, not the road plan that came in front of you, it does appear they may be close to the 100 foot buffer zone on the very east side of the property. Um, so it is something I believe that you could require at this point and as built to be done um, because there is potential for, here's the lot, or here's the plan, or system. So this area in here, potentially. Here's the 100 foot buffer where my finger is. There may have been a little bit, and I say may because I don't know, because um, you know, the clearing has been done in here. It, it gets really thick, so it's hard to go and see where the actual wetland is and measure it, plus the topography lends itself. I, it's not something I could do. Um, we also need to know exactly where did the road get constructed exactly where it should have, because Otherwise, we can go out there. I can't go out there and measure from the existing cul-de-sac right now and know that the distance from the cul-de-sac to the wetland is as per this plan. So I would recommend that you require them to file an as-built site plan within 90 days. The cul-de-sac is not caved. Right. So there's no really defined border to that, is there? That's another thing, yeah. yeah. Um, so an as-built in general, would you could do an as-built for existing edge of gravel hmm. for this. Right. This is the plan that you approved, which you can see at the cul-de-sac. You only see this part <coughs> of the cul-de-sac. You don't see the wetland over here. Um, I also talked with Mr. Donovan about the box implementation of the box turtle <coughs> testing area, and he wanted to do that this fall. 
upon you know, further review and refreshing um, my memory, the, um, it can't just be done because under MISA, MISA doesn't, it could be done under the Endangered Species Act, which is their requirement. But our order of conditions expired several years ago. So any new activity, even if it was previously allowed, needs to come back in front of you. Um, that turtle protection area was supposed to have been installed back when the road was done. So it hasn't been. And I think, again, you can require that to be refiled as a notice of intent within 90 days. Um, it was kind of the project, the approval of the project was partially contingent upon that happening. Um, and the only reason I say 90 days is again, engineering needs to be done um, and refiling needs to get done. It's not something that can done happen overnight. So um, I spoke with the applicant or with the owner's attorney today about these issues and he seems to be willing to work with us, you know, to help his client with this process. Um, and this is why this is why the conversation about the asphalt plan has come up right now, because the current order of conditions state that an asphalt plan signed by an engineer shall be provided when requesting a certificate of compliance. Legally, we can't require somebody to request a certificate of compliance if they want it to be a hindrance on their deed for however many years and then when they go to sell the property it becomes an issue, this is what happens, then that's, that's what happens. But how do we prevent that? And I think by provide, like saying that they have to provide it within a certain number of days after completion of a project. And it could be for a lot of houses, not for this, but like upon an occupancy permit. We, we have to sign occupancy permits, so if I get an occupancy permit to sign, we know that the project is almost complete, or is complete. You know? So we have to come up with some new language for that? Once yeah, so. Um, so I think we, ha and I've been trying to keep the abutters apprised of, you know, the discussions, and I've been in touch with, um, the applicants and touching base with you and I hope that you think that the what we've kind of laid out 90 days for an as-built site plan and 90 days for a notice of intent for the turtle creation plan is is what you would think okay so we need a motion to require that you pass the um, I would say it would, to make it legal and binding and yep. something that's uh, upholdable is, uh, is to issue an enforcement order to that effect. Issue an enforcement order? order to have well, we have to, to require the 90 days <coughs> first. To issue an if you don't do it within that time. No, to issue an enforcement order saying that within 90 days you have to provide an as-built plan and a, after, or a uh, notice of intent because this work was not done. Okay, but we don't know that it wasn't done as yet because we don't have the engineer's plan. Well, we know they haven't done the turtle protection plan. Yes, that we that yeah. that we could, but not for the other one, I don't think. Right, we don't have an as-built either. That's what the other one is, is just requiring an as-built. Right, well, we, they, they're under no obligation to give us one either because they haven't requested if, a certificate of If there is question about whether they have encroached in an area without right. our permission. Yeah, so I, I say we ask give them 90 days and if they don't provide it in the 90 days then we do a uh, order of enforcement okay for What's that the for that one I, I don't understand the distinction right i mean the order of enforcement is kind of punitive in my mind we haven't even asked them for are you you're worried about being punitive here I, i'm not i mean an enforcement order to me has more teeth to it than just a letter requesting or saying you have to do this. Um, if you went to uh, enforcement order can be appealed. Um, it just, it's, to get out of it, they, we'd have to 
you know, the commission would have to release it. <coughs> in the MDE in Flipsley board meeting, their order of conditions said that they were to provide that upon requesting a certificate of compliance. Yep. While I think we can ask for the actual plan, I'm not sure we could have an enforcement order mm -hmm. because really they're not out of you know the order of conditions. Now that would be different for the plan to you know, deal with the box for it. I think it's a little bit of a gray area because I it, you can require and as you can require a new plan if you think there's been activity that's happened on the property that is not in compliance with your approved plan. Okay, but that's requiring the plan as opposed to an enforcement order. We can. So, so I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> you require a new plan. Right. We can do it that way. But for the box turtle, I think an enforcement order is probably appropriate. Yeah, yeah and I okay. agree with that. <coughs> that's fine. Right. I don't know why we would, wouldn't be showing the QT on both ends. It's like th these guys haven't submitted any information. You know, they're potentially uh, proposing a very significant development there. I think we need to clear these things up so that when the next steps happen, we're, we have a little more information. I, I'm in favor of, of making it very clear that we need these things from them. It's not a casual request, it's a demand. I don't know why we would be concerned about that. Well, John, I don't think enforcement order, if we requested, gave them a time period and then they didn't comply, then I think, uh, yeah, then I think we could do the enforcement order. Okay, well. Apparently, I'm in the minority here, so I will concede the point. Well, that's my, that's my point. They haven't been point. required to comply. They haven't way. been required I to haven't. provide us with the actual plan. Because in the order of conditions, as Amy said, mm -hmm. it was to be provided upon requesting the order of compliance, which they haven't done this yet. I mean, it's a technical point. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> yeah. And the attorney, our attorney, does state that, you know, yes, the tr for the turtle plan, backing up. Yeah, for the, the turtle, turtle plan, plan is technically, it is in, it's the Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program, which is MISA at the state. It is their requirement, but it is in our order, so you can enforce it. Okay. And that, I think we can do the enforcement order. Yes. So, I mean, MISA should have. But there's been conversations with them too. Hopefully everybody is involved as they should be now. Including us, I mean. So can we get a motion then on this? Jim, do you want us to try this? Uh, let me try it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be open to any editing. But uh, I move that we request an as-built plan for Chloe's path and that we vote for, a, that we approve an enforcement order for the requirement of a plan to protect box turtle. Both within 90 days. Both within 90 days, yes. Any discussion on this? Oh, do we have a second? I'll second. Second. Yes. Any discussion? Hearing none then, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda, start of discussion of land investigation of tasks. This is, this is my topic. I asked Amy to put this on here. Um, I sort of, I, I sent her a list of what I consider to be some of the issues that have come up on a regular basis during all of our meetings over the years that we, I think we sort of assume that Amy's going to tackle these things. And I try. It, she I does. Try. She does a <laughs> yeoman's job of, of addressing these things on a, on, a, on a very timely basis for the most part. But there's a lot of them, I think, that, that just kind of fall by the wayside and they just never really get a life of their own as they should. The ones that I have on my list, and there may be more, and I'd ask people to, to contribute and think of, is uh, potential fertilizer restrictions, 
uh, Amy sent a note around and Mark has raised this in a number of past meetings on dogs in Thompson's field off leash. Um, we obviously have had a number of discussions on the Herring River study. Uh, we've talked about gate controls for the Depot Street bogs and uh, management of the Bell's Neck bogs as well. Um, you know, making sure that we flood the bogs if need be, that sort of a thing. Um, and, and it just never seems to get done, I, I think, for the most part. And then the one other thing was, and I'm not sure if this has already been addressed, but if, even if it has, I'd like to continue to press it, is allowing alternate commission members to vote in meetings oh, yeah. when a quorum's needed. Um, I don't think we allow that in our town bylaws, which is the problem. But it's in the charter. It's a charter. I, is it the charter? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if we can try to push that. Or well, to that end, the town administrator is really looking at making charter changes this year. Good. So it might be an opportune time to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. So with those on the list, uh, and some of them I think are fairly obvious. I mean, the fertilizer restriction, I'll raise my hand on that one and take that on as my responsibility. Um, dogs on the Thompson Field, I know Mark has expressed an interest Mark in that. Mark would like to, yes. And I think he would be very happy yep. to take the lead on that. Yep. Um, Herring River study. I, I can give you a quick update. I, I sent out a um, edit of what Amy provided us. She gave us a scope on tasks and it, it's still in my outbox. <laughs> I sent it out today. It, it hasn't gone out. Long. So for some reason. I've been getting things in from people. So. Right. So you'll see that probably tomorrow. Yep. It, it uh, works off of Ernie's edits and then I think it's just going to the, the subcommittee as opposed yep. to everybody. For now. Yeah. So. You, I did put some time and a couple hours working on it, and I summarized it, so that's coming out from, from my end anyways. So, so can we, <clears throat> you only take the lead on that then? Yeah, I mean, you know, right now I think we're the two commission members on, it's an unofficial subcommittee, I think. It's not a vote. Yeah. yeah, and you'd be working yeah. with me too. Yeah. I'm not giving everything to you. Yeah, yeah. No, I, right. if you want to lead, I can take the lead on that because I have a strong interest in that. And, and that's great. Yeah. And, and what I'm sort of envisioning is, you know, as as time allows and opportunity arises, you know, we would report at meetings yeah. too, just so we make sure they don't fall on the yeah. on the wayside as they have in the past. Um, gate controls for the Depot Street or Bank Street Bells Neck Bogs, something you would be willing to take on? Yeah, no, I saw the emails flying around the other yeah, day, and I've already taken helping big of an initiative there, and I've looked at state contracts. There's a couple of complications there. From what Heinz Prof said, I, yeah. I see that, and you know, Brad chimed in on different things. But um, you know, we can make a decision on the gate; that's no problem. It's where the location we're going to place it, because the actual actual entrance <coughs> is the town of Dennis. Right. We just have to go over to talk to them. I'm sure they'd be fine with that. But then maybe we want to just bring it down further mm. and put it, make a parking area there at the lower part of that roadway next to the bog. Mm. So then you can have a gate there. You know, it would just mean extra cost for electricity going down there, but those kind of options we th should think of because what is it preventing, you know, it's preventing people from getting in to walk and, you know, we're trying to control the fish taking the, uh, Yeah, I'd, I'd have concerns with that because it's only a nighttime closure. And so you could park where you're describing, bring a bucket down the herring run and get your fish. No, no, I understand. I'm just saying that some of the things that Heinz was talking about, and I was just throwing that all into the whole mix of things. Yeah. If it was something to think about, that would be one solution. but. Obviously, we're just trying to stop the poaching mm -hmm. you know, from that at night yeah. time. And other illegal activities that happen down yeah, there at night time. Yeah. Um, so. It doesn't have to just be during herring season. So other towns do have gates. Yeah. Just to expand on this a little bit, we do um, have a little, we still have uh, um, some money in CPC funds. And one of the items that we got we said we we're going to do is do gates. It's going to be for Robin's Pond, but we can use that money for any prop for the properties that are um, open space properties that we have that were purchased with some CPC funds, which uh, the Bell's Neck was um, for at least portion of it. So we are, and we've always had a conversation about who's going to open and who's going to shut the gate. I think we would have enough money to buy electronic gates that at a timer, and. 
you have to put up a big sign and tell people like gate shuts at 9 p.m. get out <laughs> or you have to call the police um, and I think a few times of that happening and you probably squash it um, but you know open at 6 a.m. for the morning walkers close at 8 or 9 p.m. Um, yeah. I think initially you'd get a little pushback but um, right. to be honest who needs to be in there at midnight yeah. And they're not doing anything good, most likely. Right. It, to me, it's you know, it's been done for so long yeah. uh, until recently, and so there will be pushback. But you know, my email was you know, just let's find a way to make it work because it. So. And um, and I'm not too concerned. The, this commission has twice voted to lock, you know, even before the concept of herring yeah. harvest. So, we couldn't work out in my mind mainly the evening management. Yeah. We in the mornings we had volunteers wi willing to go open it. With the lock gate, it was the evening closures that was outside. difficult. Yeah. So, but if if it's a, if you go to automatic gate, then that kind of goes away. Well, I talked to Brian Mel, who does the municipality services for the source. He does the actual drops. So I've got all that paperwork. And we'll let that group this all together. Yeah, so that's great. Put that together because that way they will tell you what it will cost for a single phase drop. And to measure the widths and stuff. And yeah, that's all. The gate can be whatever size. It's right. just the actual function of the electrical um, Depending the on the price. I don't yeah. know if I have to put out an RFP or not. We'll see what the, right. what, we'll see what a, well, I was looking at state a contract court vendor. is. I was looking at state contract vendors so we don't yeah. have to go through that. Okay. Because they're already behind us. Yeah. Okay. okay. The last two items I have is the uh, management of the bogs in there. Well, Bell's Neck, I think, in general, because there's other issues, I would say, you know, other management things in the Bell's Neck we may want to look at that are less pressing, but there's um, there's a lot of social trails in there that, in well, my mind. Well, where, I'm, where I'm going, though, I mean, every year we talk about trying to flood those bogs so that... Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. Well, so can I, can the I management of the yeah, bog. Can I step back and just say that, you know, we have, you know, twice voted to update the Bell's Neck Conservation yeah. Plan. And that would include all those activities, in, in, including recommendations for the gate operations. So um, to me, it's it's kind of a daunting task. It's a big document. But I, I think it's it's one of those things that has been put off. So we not only have we voted to update it, we voted to a preferred option on a management plan. You know, so I, I think let's just dust that off, revisit it, okay. and then get this present we're not involved in those discussions. So you, the, the four of us here were. Yeah. So to me, un until we vote otherwise, we still have a, a path that's on the table. So just put that on the... Well, I think we, so updating the management plan, it's something I can start to do, um, especially if other people can help me with some, some of these other tasks. So. It, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I'm hanging on for, so I'd be happy to like dive into it okay. and, and write as much as you need to and edit. So. Um, if, yeah, if you want me to be active. We, we had a subcommittee once upon a time. It was Mark, Jim Donovan, and myself. Right. So we, we could revisit a subcommittee if yeah. we thought we needed to, or we just work to get a draft for people to you know, look at. And um, I, I think <coughs> it's, it needs to be done. Okay. I think we need a subcommittee because there is a lot of work. And I think the people are dedicated to it. And that will help streamline a lot of the other projects that we have and other areas of the town. Yeah. Um, we're going to break that down and yeah. discuss it. So I think the subcommittee would be. It's, it's a good document, though. I mean, we put a lot of work into that thing. We did, and, and the, the existing plan is, is not going to be thrown out. I mean, that's going to no, be it's a very template. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so I think it's a, it's a lot of rolling up your sleeves and editing and, and modernizing what's going to happen and then, you know, adopting the present, you know, strategy. Things. So I, if. Yeah, I'm, whatever you guys want to do. I, I'll, I'll be active either way, whether it's within a sub or with Andy. So we'll put it on the agenda for not the 19th, but maybe some meeting. Yeah, I, I'll disseminate it. Or I'll put it in your Dropbox, because um, and we can start kind of plugging away at the areas that need updating. Some of the stuff doesn't, because um, it's for the whole area. Yeah. In the long way, excuse me, but Mr. Chairman, long way when I was in there, the signage, you know, you talk about the dog stuff, but years ago, signs because there's one that just got exposed on Great Western Road by the Heron River mm -hmm. when they clear cut all the brush the town did yeah. you can see the two posts standing there but it used to say Howard's Conservation yeah. 
You know, I mean, maybe we should come up with a nice design or whatever, and have a sign program put out because yeah. people don't know, and then you can add different things on there. Well, we have the rules and regs, but they all. This one does have a sign, but the vegetation's kind of covering a little bit, mm. and it needs to be redone anyway, which is why I haven't made a huge effort to uncover it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all kind of management. Yeah, so. yeah, better signage. You know, and I, and I'll just mention this because it's been a pet peeve of mine since moving to the town. We have signage at the beaches, no alcohol, no dogs, <laughs> and they're violated all the time. So I don't know how you enforce these things. So even like at Thompson Field, how are you going to enforce things like that? Did you see the list of... Um, it's not a list that I gave to everybody oh, it's just not. yet because I didn't want to have public discussion we're, about we're, it. Yeah, we're going to have the animal control officer come to one of our future meetings to talk about what she's seen uh, or what she's had recorded to her. Over she gave a list, a pretty serious list. It, it, it was disturbing. I mean, a dog running up and knocking over a three-year-old child and then jumping on her pregnant mother and knocking her down as well. You know, chasing chickens in the neighbor's lawns all around Thompson Field. I mean, it's it, it's really disturbing to see what. Oh, she's I'm not disagreeing with. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's. I, I think Mark is really well served in bringing this up as something yeah. we need to deal with. But I'm it's saying it's going to be a fight. But um, okay. Well, I think the last so last time we talked about it, um, the main point that people were making was prove it. Prove it's an issue. Prove it, and then. Um, so that's why I did reach out to Jen after we had the conversation with Mark. Mark Jen put together a list um, for the past two years and gave that to me. She couldn't make it here tonight, so we'll put her on upcoming. But before we do that, um, yeah, we're going to, Ernie and I will meet and Mark um, with Jen to go over things before we go into a public forum yeah. about all this. It, it might be good at some point to share the minutes of those prior hearings that were the largest hearings I've been involved with. Yeah. Um, we had two hearings on this That's before. Um, <laughs> it's been years ago, but yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah, we, we proposed essentially, I think, to make one section um, leash on, the other section leash off, which would be acres and acres of leash off. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that was got a lot of pushback. And we let it go. And so that's kind of where it's been. But I, I think those minutes might be instructive. There's a lot of good discussion in this commission on you know what could be done and that that was the thought let's not eliminate leash off capability no well but to keep in the back of our mind that property was purchased in a certain way yeah and that property was purchased with self-help grant funds and dogs are supposed to be on leash it says as per the town's leash law and um the town's leash law has not been that so there was a mistake being made and i don't know if those funds were granted under the auspices that we had an on leash because it was the reason we bought that land was for water protection purposes because there could have been over 200 homes on those 87 acres um, or an airport <laughs> or something else. And um, we bought it for water protection purposes and for wildlife. So um, we got to be careful too, you know, if you can't, you shouldn't be violating the terms of if you bought a property. And, um, so we, we'll have a broader discussion about this going forward, but kind of keep that in mind as we talk about alternatives. If, there, if the commission and decides they want to change things from what they're, that they are down there. And I want better communication. I, the list that was given to me, I was only made known of one of those incidences. And I said, this is our land. We need to know what happens on it. Um, so there needs to be, like when you get reported something there, we need to get a copy of it. That should be happening at the Bell's Neck too, any, any of our conservation areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's well. an incident on our property, we need to know about it. Absolutely. That's where the signs come in and they can warn people. True. That that's there, it's posted. Yeah. You know, you want by the sign. I know people don't want to pay. pay but it's there, but it's a liability it's there, it's there. thing right. too. I'm just going to suggest maybe we should reach out to the tech school too. Is there a carpentry class, yeah. a graphics class, yeah. horticulture class? Maybe we can get Mr. Sanborn back there and ask if those students would like to get involved. Once we have some planning and management, they might want to do projects. 
With the decrease in number of AmeriCorps members, I'm reaching out. I'm reaching out to their horticulture program to help us get work done. Yeah. Um, so the last thing is this alternate commission member, and I'm not sure that's even something we need to tackle. Let me ask the new town clerk, and let me ask the um, copy of the town administrator who changes, and see if it's something that we can. If it's something we can bring up. All right, or but at I least they can put that on their list of things I will to look take at. That. What would you propose in terms of well, other in, in order to meet a quorum? Other towns have rules that would allow an alternate to sit in as a voting member if there is if there is not a quorum. Yeah, so if there's not that's a quorum. That's what I'm saying. Right. So it's and not just and a in some cases, of even if you don't have, if, 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 a, if a member is absent, the alternate could sit in for that absent member as well, even if there is a quorum. Okay, well, that's what I was asking. That's yeah. different than just... Yeah, I know. There's there's different ways to approach it, um, but we don't have any language at all right. one way or the other, which I think we should if we're going to have alternates. And I think it would be good for encouraging more people to become alternates, too. So if they get an opportunity okay. to participate more. So what have I missed? What do you guys... Well, uh, I have a comment on process. Sure. Uh, adding something to the list, but we need to add anything to the list. But it's, um, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, one of the reasons these things um, maybe take longer than we'd like is that the committee and the union get busy with other things. I mean, if you said that, I'm suggesting that this list or some vari variant of this list be a permanent fixture on the agenda mm -hmm. at the end of the meeting so that we can at least briefly visit these items, partly just to remind ourselves that they're there, but also giving people who are involved in the items a chance to brief everyone else when they wouldn't think to otherwise, or maybe it's just minor progress or whatever. I'm at put yeah. permanent fixture on agenda. Okay. okay. Good. Thanks. Yeah. And you can condense that and, and have you know land management you know discussions. Right. Uh, having read the study, so. Yeah, it could rotate or something. If it got to be too much to do it every like an update on everything every but meeting, you yeah, could yeah. rotate. But even it. if you have those things there. Yeah. You could just say, okay, there's nothing here this week. Mm -hmm. This time. They're still there to remind people that they're there. Sure. I get it. Any other topics? I have one. I should have two other topics. One is uh, Skinnequip Pond. I actually, I went and looked at the Atlas Skinnequip Pond a couple weeks ago and sent an email to Brad and Amy and, and Hines. week sometime just to check it out. It was very overgrown. Monday. Right, Monday. <laughs> Whenever. Whatever. <laughs> uh, and the pond level was still a couple inches too low for, for yeah, I actually went over there again a couple days ago and looked at, after we'd had the heavy rain and the water was right up to the lip of that thing. So I actually, Brad and I talked about this. I sent an email to various people saying, let's get a crew together and clean the lower part out. Um, and there was various back and forth. Also talked to Hines on the phone after he sent an email. And he agreed, yeah, it was a good idea to clean out what you were suggesting in the email. So. I suggested the 14th, which is next, week. next Friday, or the 17th, which is the following Monday. And I, I didn't get a, 
response from Connor. Okay. Um, HCT, Mike responded and said, you know, we'll join when you figure yeah. it out. Um, but we're not talking about clearing the banks, right? We're not talking about cutting frag mines on the banks, just getting the frag out of the channel. It's not going to be a big team or a big effort. Two hours, two and a half, three hours? I think we should just choose one of those two days and tell people we're going to do it then and hope we get one or two more people. Let us know and we will. What, what do you think, Brad? You said either of those days is okay? Yeah. Do yep. What, what happens two years ago, this happened when the flow came up and we did all that work. Um, juvenile River Herring were released from Skinnequip Pond and they got bound up in all these lead jams down below, yeah. above where we worked. And there was some minor mortality. I, I think it's important once the flows come up is to have that pathway clear for them. And so that means put, put in two hours soon, you know, because that water's yeah, coming up. Really soon. We yeah. saw juveniles on that last Monday. It was interesting. I, I went to Long Farm, Hinkley, Seymour, and Skinniquit. The only place I saw juvenile herring was at Skinniquit. Oh, really? And we, we kind of grubbed things out a little bit. And once we did, a little bit of flow started trickling, and those fish showed up right away. Yeah. And they, they can just sense that movement of water. The 14th or the 17th, but let's agree here today, whoever wants to be involved, is one of those days better? I, I recommend the Friday just because Heinz can make it if he chooses. Oh, that's right. Where he's off on Mondays. Yeah. I can't, but okay. Melissa probably could. But yeah. you, you seem to have, like, you're going to have enough people. To yeah. Do it, so. I honestly think three or four people could make the difference because it's going to be. Melissa good. can, I'll, t I'll tell her, and if okay. she can, she will. She'll email you. Okay, yeah. before we nail this down, let me make sure I have the dates right. Friday the 14th. And I don't mind Monday right. either, but I just know that Heinz doesn't work. Yeah, right. right. No, it's oh. a Tuesday. And Heinz the other one's a Tuesday. Um, the 17th is a Tuesday, right? No, it's not. No, no sorry. Monday. Monday. My bad. And Heinz, when I talked to Heinz, he said he might be available, but he might not. I don't know whether, but let's do it Friday when, when he, he could Club do by. it because he doesn't. Yeah. What's the right tide? It is the right tide. What time? I think low tide is 9 o'clock. Um, so let's make it 9 o'clock Friday. I'm just going to let Melissa know. Yep. Um, and I'll try to get you, um, if you want me to try to get you one or two other people. I know some people who might be interested too. Okay. Yeah. Where right. are we going to meet? Where, where should we probably meet? Probably. You can park down that, that roadway off of Hershey that connects to Uncle Beanie's. Oh, yeah. Just past the brook, yeah, you can you can pull over there. Um, otherwise, you kind of walk, walk up the road. Otherwise, yeah. you got to go up Skinny Lane or whatever it is, and then you're parking in somebody's. We can park driveway. on Uncle Beanie's and walk up the road, up the well, run, if it's clear. Yeah. Yeah, we. The easiest thing is just park on the side of the road on Uncle yeah. Beanie's, right yeah. where okay. the yeah, old run goes under the road and. What a boys and Ivy. Where do we need the tools? You know. Um, it, it's Phragmites and then it's debris. And so, you know, like a, like a muck rake yeah. is good. Clippers a little bit, but I, I don't Or a garden fork, even. I, 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 okay. well, I'd use a chainsaw here. in that closet, you know. Yeah. It, it, I think, you know, we hit it two years in a row, so eventually you're just tuning it. I think, you, you know, yeah. Heinz goes there in the spring and he takes care of north of there towards the pond. Yeah. And that section's good. It's the lowest section that he doesn't work in. I, I think it's at a point where two or three hours a year is going to be, right. maybe in the spring and fall. But we need to go upstream, though, right? I mean, we we can. I mean, Heinz hits that really well every spring. If you're there, check it. Maybe we, we can yeah. check it if there's any tree falls. Something major. Yeah. yeah. I'll have Melissa bring a saw, but generally okay. I don't want her. I don't want any of us operating a saw if we're in chaps and we have to wear chaps in the water. It's hazardous. But yeah. Two years ago, there were several pine tree falls yeah. happened since Heinz was there in the spring. So just in six months, there's a lot that more stuff. Tornado. Yeah. All right, thanks, John. Okay. Right. Putting that together. October 14th, 9 o'clock, I'll tell Melissa. She'll let you know right. if she's coming, too. And um, I'll try to get you another person, too. I will. I'll just send a reply to my own email about it. Just mail you want me down. to touch base with Connor? I'll call. I'll call. All right. Sometimes a phone call is better. Yeah. He gets a lot of emails. How much frag money are we dealing with? We're not, well, there's a ton along the bank, but we're not going to be cutting on the bank. I don't know how much is in the water, though. We've it's been not a lot. We've been digging that out. 
the last two visits, and so there's still a little bit growing in the channel. When we first got there, it was a near full blockage. There was so much frag and debris building up on it. And uh, that, that's the hardest work, is getting those roots out. You've yeah. got, you've got to dig a little, you got to dig a little bit. Cool. Good. Great. Great. All right. Um, Next, so we got this up. I'm sorry, something you want to add? I was going to keep going on okay. the list. Yeah, the update on the Herring River study. Just that we've, I've given the subcommittee and our um, officials who are helping us from the county um, a draft RFP and Brad just sent over some comments. Um, somebody else sent me some comments too. We'll incorporate that and then meet again. So hopefully get that out shortly um, to see what kind of interest we get. And then the last item on the agenda is our fertilizer restriction letter. Can we talk about it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Ernie and I drafted, we talked about this last time, it's kind of a general support letter. Mm -hmm. um, so Ernie and I drafted it um, to see what you think about it to kind of. This one you handed out, Amy, it's not the latest one no, of it the is. edits. I October don't think. 5? It is, because I took, I made your edits. Oh, okay. I, I, I incorporated them. Oh, okay. If you have new ones, that's fine too. This is your purpose for you to see it. Yeah, the I, I last sentence on the page where it says, this is something we feel ourselves as individuals in the town can and must control. I, I'd, I'd change that up a little bit. Okay, I maybe think I didn't I said, save this that This is something piece. we feel the town can and must control. I took out that we feel ourselves as individuals in. Do you, do you want to say that home, that. do you want to say that homeowners can contribute? Something like that. Um, something we feel that homeowners can contribute to uh, reducing this this impact. Um, uh, every homeowner. Yeah. I have two minor comments that um, I can leave this with you. You can take a look at it. Sure. Um, the first one is, you've got 14 percent as a contribution for nitrogen and phosphorus. Yeah. It's really uh, about 14 for nitrogen. I don't think it's the same number for phosphorus. Okay. Um, but either way, I, I suggested calling it 10 to 15 percent because um, you'd almost have to say approximately 14 percent because every study comes up with something different. Or we just cite the source that we got it from, which I had originally thought about doing. Okay. Yeah. Either cite the source or, or, or put in 10 to 15. But I agree with you. I think it should say just nitrogen. 15 is what I think is what came up in the Skinner Hood study, mm -hmm. and I think it was the same for uh, 14 for the mm -hmm. MEP report. Right. It, so it depends on the watershed. Up you, you, to 15 percent? If you cite the source, I think you're golden. Um, otherwise, I'd put 10 to 15 because some studies come in a little bit lower. But um, I, to put the 14 without an approximately or a citation, I thought. Or I could say depending on which That's study, I and I, we could also, you know, That's correct. say 10. Oh, okay. And I'll go. Okay. In the second edit, it's, and this is really just if you want it or not, Ernie and, and Amy, after that sentence on 14%, I, I just said, I, I thought of putting in a sentence that says, further, specific locations adjacent to sensitive natural resources can have disproportionate impacts. And I've, I've had people tell me, who cares about 12, 14%? They think it's minor. But what can happen is you can have a lawn or properties next to Witchmere Harbor that can just have a, a, a much bigger impact because the drainage can go that way. Does that open the door for arguments that, you know, we're not near a water body, so you shouldn't restrict yeah. our use of fertilizer? I think we leave this vague for now, and then as okay. we have meetings about this, we get into discussion where okay. proximity matters to a certain extent. It, it, it can because that's, I, I see those disproportionate impacts. Yeah. But I suppose for this letter, keep it general. Um, and again, it's all the same groundwater too, so it doesn't matter where the property is. There's some, there is some that. impact. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Thanks. I'll look at that last sentence. Um, what you put because I okay. maybe saved it before I made the. I don't know. So, but tonight we would like to get a vote on uh, from the commission on sending this to the board of selectmen. Well, I I move that we um, approve this letter prepared by Amy and signed by Ernie to. Uh, Go to the board of selectmen. And a second on that. I'll second it. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Give me one of oh, those guys. Yeah, you one. have some other ones? Sure. No, no, no. You gotta, oh, you're not sending this letter. You're making another. No, one. we're making some right. edits. Yeah, so, as, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with minor edits. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll modify we my here. motion. Yeah, as dis edits as discussed. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No opposed. We're unanimous. Thank you very much. I'll edit it and have you come sign. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, the slot. Hi. This is going to be an interesting battle. Yeah, you lined up a few, few of those. So the next meeting is going to be very big. Um, at least that's how it looks. So I say that sometimes and things drop off at the last minute. But you got 14 mil point um, coming back. You've got and we have the violation for 16 old coach hopefully coming in and a few other things. So I will be gone starting Friday through the end of next week. So I'll be back Monday the 17th. And in my stead, Melissa will be here. And um, if you have any pressing needs, contact her. Um, she's going to, I'm going to have her try to start reviewing some, some of the easier projects. Um, but uh, um, I'm spending a lot of my day tomorrow. We got a lot of filings in, so starting my review early. Okay? Good. Hope you're not going to Sanibel Island. <laughs> no. I was. Seriously? No. Oh. <laughs> but I changed to um, Tampa. <laughs> no, I'm going to um, Las Vegas. Oh, and nice. Yeah. There you go. It's a rescheduled trip in. from a long time. Yeah, maybe if, if we have time, the Hoover Dam. Do there's a lot of stuff. Like there's so much stuff that. Interesting to see nowadays. Um, yeah, but anyway. had these, no, they don't get rain out there. They had these, like a month ago, they had days and days of torrential floods where there was video of water like up the doors of the casinos on the Las Vegas Strip. Oh, right. Yeah, it was, and I'm like, please not when I'm there. <laughs> oh, is that where you're going? I should give you my great niece's name. She works out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, all right, that's, oh, 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 here, here, here. I know, I have something else for you. So the Garden Club of Harwich is celebrating their 90th year of serving Harwich by planting 90 plus native trees. Um, if you would like to plant one, the Garden Club has a form for you. Um, and we have more of these in my office, so if anybody's interested, we can grab one. You can grab one. I was going to give this one to John because Dinah might say be interested. What the native trees are. This has a couple examples. Do you have a PDF that you could email? Huh? Do you have a PDF you can email? I'll or? email the PDF. Yeah, that'd be great. But I'll give you the paper one, John. Yeah, I'd like to send it over tomorrow. Impressive. Can we motion to adjourn? Somebody to All in favor? Aye. 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 I know a lot. <laughs>